Okay, we're, we're here skating at the Sunshine Vert Ramp on the sunny coast in Queensland, Australia. Today's video is called Line of the Week, where I'm going to bring you through a progression of a few different lines, and we're going to end at Rock to Fakey, switch feeble forward to kickflip indie. But I'm going to take you from a complete beginner, where we're just going to ride up and go down Fakey, do a power slide across the ramp, and we're going to discuss how little changes in weight placement and in rhythm of the pump and changes in your speed, how that's going to affect the power slide and how that's going to relate to, you know, the fakey board slide and then the step above that, which is the switch feeble to forward. We're going to do the same thing from kick turn up into airs, up into kickflip indies. So whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, this video is going to have something for you. And especially if you're advanced, I, I would really urge you to watch the beginning where we're talking about fundamentals and weight placement and how useful power slides are. Because even for me, skating, competing for 14, 15 years, this is, these are things that I do every day to kind of recalibrate myself. And it helps with the hardest tricks I've ever done. So I'm really excited for this series and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna ride up and come back down fakey and then try to get a little power slide across fakey. And then on the third wall, a kick turn works, or if you can do any type of ollie or air, that works too, but our main goal would be to do an air and land lower than where you take off. For the beginner lines, when you're going to do a kick turn, before you know how to get off the ramp or do anything crazy, when you're going to kick turn, I just want you to pay attention between the relationship between the front shoulder, knee, and foot, like this whole side. Let's say there's a line from your front foot to your shoulder that never breaks. Keep that in mind as you're learning how to get your balance right for kick turns to move towards airs, you kind of want these things to stay together a little bit. I don't want you leading with the upper body with your lower body staying way behind and then the foot catching up. I feel like that puts you too far toe side and it makes it really easy for foot to actually slip off the board forward. You can do it to practice so you know what that feels like. I actually do that all the time to get a feel for it. I'll go switch and you know when you're skating switch the line would be on the other side and I'll break it on purpose and then come back and just see if I can recover but the real idea is to keep them together and to not feel like stuck so a lot of times you need a little bit of a wind up so you can get the kick turn working quickly but without this side breaking down Keep that in mind for your kick turns. It'll feel like there's a lot of balance up on that lead leg, inside of the lead hip, inside of the lead shoulder. You'll feel like you can see your front foot a lot better more often. Like you don't really lose sight of your front foot ever. Where if you get over here, you're just looking at you're just looking at nothing and then trying to get your foot back under you. But if you can keep sight of your front foot, it makes your life a lot easier. to vert skating is all in the power slides. If you can power slide across the wall, that means you have pretty good control of your weight. You're not smashing into the wall and having a bunch of pressure in it. You're able to get up and feel like you're floating. So the first thing that we're gonna focus on a lot on this video is the fakey power slide across and really why it's so important, why it'll help you so much. Every time I'm warming up, every time I'm getting used to a new ramp, I'm doing power slides all around the vert ramp to, yes, to feel how sticky the ramp is, but also to get a, to, to get a pace for the rhythm of the ramp. Like this one is 
pretty small and tight. So for a minute, I was kind of feeling like I was getting stuck against the wall. But then once you get it and you're able to let the wheels slide, then you kind of got the pace of the ramp. Uh, it's a really important skill, no matter how good you are really, just to get a feel for the ramp. And then it's so useful as you start doing lip tricks and airs where you treat the power slide like you're actually doing the lip trick or air. So I'll do a, I'll do a couple power slides, fakie, across the wall. Okay, I kind of feel like I'm jumping off of the wall to release my wheels from the actual ramp. I don't feel like I'm trying to push. I don't feel like I'm trying to push through the ramp. I feel like I'm getting up here and I'm trying to release my weight from it and then land back on the board. Being able to control your weight up and off of the ramp while still kind of being on it and still being able to slide. No way. That sucks. So feeling like you can control your weight to feel like it's coming off of the ramp a little bit while your wheels are still on, you're able to slide them, you weigh like nothing on the ramp, that's gonna give you so much feel. When you're going into fakie rock, there's that same feeling of weightlessness, but you're still controlling where you are on the ramp. You're not just jumping out. And the same thing on the power slide. So as you do power slides, if you don't wanna do anything else, you can just do power slides and play with how far you can get your weight from the ramp See how far you feel like you can get your weight off of the board without your feet actually leaving the board, without your wheels leaving the ramp. Seeing how weightless everything can get. Extending that period so you feel like you're in the air longer even though your wheels are still on the ground. And then as you do like a fakie pop rock, the pacing's not gonna feel that wild because vert skating is really slow and rhythmic. If you're doing those power slides right, you can kind of tap into that. I would like to do rock to fakie to kind of drill this point home. I'm gonna do it right here. So it's the same thing on a rock to fakie. I want it to feel like your weight is doing the same thing as the power slide where you're kind of getting some space and then coming back to the ramp where you feel up here and then it kind of comes back. Where I only have like feels like I have like two pounds on the coping. It doesn't feel like I'm going like this, where I'm standing all my weight on the actual coping. Feels like I'm controlling, like I'm doing that power slide. And it feels like I'm just staying in the ramp and I'm doing a little maneuvering with the board, but it's a very similar pace to the power slide fakie. <clears throat> That's part of the reason I like these two tricks back to back. To back. Let's just finish the intermediate version of the line. <clears throat> but it can be any air, really. Front hand, back end, I don't care. But the main, the main thing that I want you to be able to do is take off from a certain point and then land below that point. So you feel like you're alling off of the wall and down the ramp a little bit. That really helps you feel comfortable getting a little bit of space from the ramp. So you're not smashing yourself into the coping. The biggest problem that people have on kickflip indies is rotating and leaning forward. That's really hard for them. You do the kickflip up here, and then you're kind of like two back seat and you can't rotate. So this feeling where you can pop and get over the board and a little bit deeper into the ramp gives you a really good feel of kind of where you have to flip the board to. So we're gonna do the intermediate version of this, of this line. Rock to fakie, fakie pop board slide and a backside indie, and an indie on that corner. But I'm gonna feel like I'm doing the indie up and out a little bit and be comfortable landing a screw or two below where I took off. <clears throat> so 
as you're doing a fakey board slide, really the, really the important thing is where you land on the board on the coping. So if you do a fakey pop, let's say this is this crack, let's say this crack is the coping. As you do a fakey pop, you want to be on the front side of the board, more towards the nose as you're sliding on the coping. You want to be very specific of where you put your board on the coping. It's going to do a lot of things. The first thing it's going to do is, is stabilize you over like the, your real center point because you're going to be leaning into the ramp a fair bit. And if you're on the middle of the board and you're leaning in the ramp, it's not as stable as if you're, if you're over on this side. It also will make it easier to clear your back trucks over the coping on the way back in. And it gives you the ability to adjust the, the tail of the board because your foot's going to be on the nose and you're not going to be like this in the middle of the board. You're going to be up here and that's going to give you a lot more maneuverability so you can aim on the way out. So as you go from indies to kickflip indies, it might be a good idea to go from tuck knee and actually go to stink bug just on your regular indies. Tuck knees, in my opinion, look better and feel a little bit better. And you have a lot more, you can maneuver the nose a lot more. But I think it promotes this poor, this like bad behavior of kick flipping into the back seat and not rotating enough. If you grab stink bug, it really can force you to get into this position so you feel like you're, you're over the board and you feel like you can roll it forward and get on it. Where if you're always doing indies back here, you might end up doing the kickflip and not have any control of the nose and not know where to go. So moving towards stink bug with a little bit more carb and really starting to feel like you can roll forward a little bit on your indies is gonna help, is gonna help a ton. You got your rock to fakie, you got your fakie pop board slide, and you got your indies. And you say, Mitchie, I wanna do, I wanna do switch feeble kick with indies. So, the things that I really want you to apply are the things that we talked about for the beginner stuff. You, you need to have really good control of your weight. You need to have really good control of your hip placement. You know, how far your hips are into the ramp, that's also going to really affect your weight. And you need to be comfortable going fast. As you start to do harder tricks, as you start to grind more and slide more on the coping, the faster you go, it's going to make it, the ramp grab you less. So you can actually start sliding through some of the thicker stuff without thinking about it. You don't have to change anything, just go a bit faster. The thing that's, the thing that might be a little surprising is if you point your front foot where you're going, it actually frees up your weight a lot to move the board. Where if, you're, if your front foot, if your lead foot, like if you're going switch and your lead foot is kind of dead on the board like this, it actually makes it a lot harder to do bigger adjustments. Where if you kind of drop the foot and point it where you're going and get your weight on, more on the ball of your foot, it's actually a, you actually have a lot more maneuverability. So even though you're going switch and then coming out forward, it's still a good idea to point this foot where you're going and get the weight on the ball of your foot. So that's the poor example. We don't like that. No maneuverability. And then this is what we like. <laughs> 